All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Children's Museum of Indianapolis Fossils in the Field. Um, JC, if you could bring me up on camera so everybody can see. Um, this presentation today is going to focus on um, paleontology, some of the work that our scientists are doing in the field for our Mission Jurassic project here at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. Basically, we're going to be exploring a little bit of work that they do to preserve fossils so they can be shipped from the location where we're digging them up out in Wyoming to the Children's Museum here in Indianapolis, hundreds and hundreds of miles away. Um, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start our presentation. So uh, what we're going to do is show you a few pictures of our scientists at work in the field at our dig site. Um, this is a picture of our scientists at uh, what we call the Jurassic Mile. It's uh, out in Wyoming and it's fossil rich. There's a lot of dinosaur fossils there from the Jurassic period. Um, if you think about animals from the Jurassic, um, you think about the, the big long neck dinosaurs, the sauropods. Um, there's also things like the allosaur um, and um, the stegosaurus. Those would all be the kinds of animals one might find in the Jurassic period of time. We're talking somewhere around 205 million years ago. What we'd like to do is excavate the bones of some of these animals, and bring them out to the paleontology lab here at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis, and uh, uh, essentially clean them up and present them to the public. So that is part of the uh, Mission Jurassic program. Now, uh, what we're going to be specifically looking at today is how they prepare those fossils for transport. Um, here is an example of a field jacket. This is the uh, protective casing that they will put around a fossil um, that they have uh, found in the field and, and dug up that they want to ship to the museum. These fossils being millions of years old, even though they're made out of rock, are quite fragile, um, typically easy to shatter or break. So they'll actually wrap them up in a cast, very similar to the cast that people used to get when they traveled to the doctor's office if they broke an arm or leg. Um, so it's a plaster coating um, that forms a shell around the fossil as we get ready to send it off for cleaning. Um, here's the material that forms a lot of the uh, stuff in the shell. Um, this is um, plaster. It'll mix it up with water. And uh, you may have noticed in our uh, materials list today, we're not including this. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out is that um, you know, plaster is very effective at, at making this hard casing, uh, but it also uh, it needs to be handled properly. Um, it, when it's mixed with water, it can often warm up quite considerably. And so you need to handle it very carefully if you're mixing it. Uh, it is something that people can acquire. If you happen to have it uh, at home or you pick it up from say an art supply store, make sure that um, when you're working with it that you follow all the directions on the packaging because um, we uh, don't want to have anybody have an accident while working with the plaster of Paris. So in any case, um, so the, the field jackets are basically made of the same material that they used to use to make the, the types of casts one would get when you break your arms or legs. Before we apply the plaster um, mix to the outside of the fossil, um, what they'll do is um, the paleontologists will uh, often add in an adhesive or a glue. And they'll use it to fill in cracks in the fossil before applying this cast. Um, once this glue hardens, that it helps keep it uh, together even inside the casing uh, when it's jolted or moved around. Uh, as it hardens, it strengthens the fossil. Um, we don't put the cast directly on the fossil. Um, we often will put in a protective barrier um, the example that we have today is aluminum foil, uh, but uh, we've also since learned that uh, um, things like uh, wet tissue paper could potentially even be used as a barrier as well. Uh, you need something that can be easily folded around the surfaces of the fossil and uh, you know, provide enough of a barrier so that the plaster won't soak through and soak and stick to the um, fossil itself. 
Uh, once the aluminum foil has been wrapped around the fossil, then you can start applying the plaster. Typically, what they'll do is they'll take burlap cloth. Um, this, you know, people used to imagine this as the cloth that was used to hold things like potatoes and potato bags were made out of thick, rough burlap cloth. So, and they would soak this stuff in a uh, water plaster mixture and then wrap it around the surface of the fossil. Uh, these fossils, by the way, are quite large. If you look in the picture there, that, that fossil, you know, is not quite as long as a person, but it, it's certainly fairly huge. And when you're applying that, that um, wrap, you're not going to be able to apply it all, all over the surface. You'll only be able to get certain surfaces at a time. So eventually what you'll have to do is let the uh, coating harden and then roll the fossil over so that you can apply it even further uh, uh, coating on the bottom that's still exposed. The fossil that I'm going to be presenting today is small enough that I can hold it in the palm of my hand, so this won't be a particular issue. I hope if you're following along with us and trying to do this at home as well, you pick something that's perhaps not too ambitious for your first try. You know, a small rock or a fossil of your own that you can hold in your hand is a good choice today. Now, uh, this is what one of the finished field jackets might look like. We've seen a number of these actually delivered to the museum from Wyoming in the past weeks. Um, these things can be quite large. I've seen ones as long as I am tall. I personally stand about, oh, six feet tall. Um, so you can imagine how massive some of these um, fossils are, are, are actually in size. Um, uh, once they're in the museum, um, then the uh, protective coating is removed. Um, these are hard enough, you would actually have to use scan tools to, to uh, get into them. So uh, chisels, saws, things like that. Um, with the materials that I've suggested today, you could probably break into the field jacket that you make just using a sturdy pair of kitchen shears. So it's not quite the same materials, but it will uh, have a similar uh, result. All right, so now that we've kind of explained what's going on out in the field and what these jackets traditionally look like, I want us to um, take a look at one of the fossils that we're going to be working with today. JC, you can switch us over. There we go. Um, so this is a fossil that would be in need of work in our paleontology lab. Um, it is not a dinosaur fossil, however. Uh, now, even though it's not a dinosaur fossil, this is a fossil that would be as old as the fossils that we're working with. This is um, a prehistoric clam, or rather oyster, that has been fossilized. You can see the shells here embedded in the rock. Now, uh, this would need to be cleaned uh, by